Hi guys, I'm Myra with Atomic Baby Cosplay, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to properly apply fusible interfacing. So first things first, I want to talk about a couple of different things. Um, one is that you do not need to use commercially available interfacing. You can substitute other things such as um, cotton organdy is great, regular cotton is great. You don't actually have to use fusible interfacing or sew-in interfacing. It's not necessary to produce a garment even if it's got that structured element. What you're really doing when you're applying interfacing is you are making your garment have more structure and body and weight to it in specific areas that are going to have more wear and tear. Like the plackets on a shirt that has like buttons on it or the collars or cuffs of a shirt or the lapels of a coat or things like that. Now in cosplay you'll use it in a lot of different areas but it's just something to note. You don't necessarily have to use interfacing and you certainly don't have to use fusible. But if you decide to go down the fusible route, these are my best tips for it. I will also say something that is very important to remember if you've used fusible interfacing on a garment, when you go to wash it in the washing machine, you want to be very aware of the temperature of your water. How fusible interfacing works is one side is coated in a glue, which you can kind of see here. It'll have little tiny polka dots on it. That side is coated in glue. That's the side you want to attach to the wrong side of your fabric. It's heat activated and how you attach it is by fusing it with an iron. So when you wash a garment that has fusible interfacing in it, if you wash it in hot water in your washing machine or you dry it in your dryer on a high temperature, it can reactivate the glue, which will cause the interfacing to separate from the garment, and then it can reactivate it again and cause it to re-glue itself in a different place, which means you can end up with some crazy wild things happening. So it's very important to be aware of how you um, take care of fusible interfacing garments. That being said, we're now going to get started on how to fuse interfacing. So step one is to cut your interfacing. How do you know what shape to cut? The way you're going to know what shape to cut is based on your pattern. So I am making a um, bow tie for a costume, so I need a collar piece that's going to wrap around the neck. And in order to do that, I have cut a piece, uh, a strip that is, I believe, five inches wide by 18 inches long. So then I cut my interfacing to be 18 inches long as well. I'm going to trim it just a little bit so it's a little bit shorter. You don't really want your interfacing to go over the edge um, of your pattern piece because it can lead to bulk in the seam allowance. So if you really want to be nice with it, you would cut your interfacing down to be just, just inside the seam allowance, but just by a little bit. So I've cut my strip to be 18 inches. I have not cut the full five, uh, five inch width or whatever width I used for this because I am planning on folding my collar over and so I'm going to sew it to itself and I only really want to interface the one side. So I cut my strip to be about half the width of my finished collar piece. All right, so now we're ready to get started. I am going to put my fabric piece face down on my ironing board. Then I'm going to take my interfacing and you can see this side has all the little dots, it's textured. I'm going to put the interfacing with the glue side down onto the wrong side of my fabric. Now I want to make sure that I'm putting my glue side down because you don't really want to get your interfacing stuck to your iron. It's possible to get it off using a dryer sheet, but it's not really fun. So you're going to set it face down, glue side down on the wrong side of your fabric. Then you're going to take a pressing cloth. In this case, I'm just using a piece of muslin that I have because, you know, it's what I can find. Um, I do have a fancier pressing cloth. Your mileage may vary with those, but a piece of muslin works just fine. The goal of a pressing cloth is just to kind of protect your iron, protect the garment, things like that. Then I'm going to take my iron, and this is the key, I'm going to press. With no steam, I'm just going to press. So how you press is just like this. You lift up and you place your iron down. You do not want to wail your iron across because it can lead to wrinkles or pulling or fuzzing of your interfacing. So you're just going to lift up and place back down and press your interfacing down. You'll kind of be able to tell when you're um, interfacing is fused properly because your um, the glue dots will become less visible. They'll be more kind of a blur. And I'm pressing this last little corner, you can't see. And you'll know it's very, very thoroughly attached. So now, as you can see, my fusible interfacing is fully fused to my fabric. And on the front side, it doesn't really look different. It just looks about the same. So what I like to do now is to flip my fabric so it's right side up. Spritz it with just a little bit of water and then lay my pressing cloth down over the top of it and give it one final press. And in this case, I will actually move my iron from side to side. 
Um, I sprayed it with water to help generate a little bit of steam. I like it because I can control how much water is on my fabric and I'm not really stressing out about whether or not it's getting too much steam or not enough steam, whatever. And this just gives it one final kind of seal to make it really crisp. There you have it. Properly interfaced, fused fabric. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you liked what you saw here today, definitely click subscribe to see more videos. And if you want to learn more about sewing and cosplay, come join my free sewing community over on Facebook called Fellowship of the Seam. I'll put a link in the description bar down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.